In this video, we're gonna take a look at the latest Photoshop updates. This is June of 2020, specifically Tuesday, June 16th, 2020, and Adobe has released a few updates to Photoshop. One of them, when it comes to selecting hair, is it's it's some of the best technology that I've seen. It's it's I thought it I thought we had really good hair selection technology and and, and now it's just actually taken it almost to one click, which is, is pretty amazing. So my name is Matt Kliskowski. Welcome to the latest video. So uh, I've got a separate video that talks about uh, some of the updates to Lightroom Classic. So feel free to check the description if you want to find that video. But here we're going to take a look at some of the updates, especially more for photographers when it comes to Photoshop 2020. One of them being some of the select subject, the other being uh, some you know pretty massive interface change to Camera Raw, as well as selective hue adjustments, which has been something people have wanted from the Raw Editor for quite a long time. So let's go ahead and dive in here. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is select subject, right? Under the select menu, you'll find sometimes there's a button depending on the tool that you have up here. And, and what I did is, is I made a copy of the original ver the Photoshop before the update. So this morning before I updated, I made a copy to just show you how jagged select subject is here. Okay. And you might recognize this photo because I've used it in a lot of tutorials where I do hair selection because everybody's is always, you know, everybody always wants to know about hair selection and it's a really good photo for that. But more than that, if you've seen it before, I want you to understand why, because I, I've used this photo for probably eight years, but it allows me to track Photoshop. I know what Photoshop could do eight years ago when I first started using it. And now I have a reference point rather than guessing each time with a new different photo. So hopefully that makes sense if you have seen this one before. That's why I keep using it so that I can track how much better it gets. But here's the original. Then what I did is I just put a black background um, I, and I experiment. I, I tried it on white, I tried it on black. So this is the old version of select subject, okay? So now let's hide those layers. I'm gonna go back to the original and press Command or Control J to make a copy. Then I'm gonna come up here and do Select Subject again. Okay, this is the new updated version, all right? So this is this is the, the latest version, middle of June 2020 that got updated. And then I'm gonna add a layer mask to this layer. I'm just gonna to go to the layer mask icon at the bottom of the, uh, the, the panel here, add a layer mask to it, which is exactly what I did before. I'm going to drag it, change the order, turn it back on. Look at that. Seriously, let's take a look. This is before. This is the old version. This is the new version. Now, there's still some decontamination as far as the colors go, but the selection is, is huge. Now, I'm going to press Command or Control I on my white layer here just so that you can see it on a different color because it looks different on, on different backgrounds. But again, this is the new version. That's the old version. Again, new and old. I used to always tell people select subject was a good starting place because it would get you there. It would, it would get you a base selection to work off of. Then we had to go into the select and mask dialog box uh, that we usually see up here and we would have to refine it. But now with the new Sensei technology that they have here, the adaptive learning, it's, it's, it's pretty compelling to see what it does with just one click. And the fact that, yeah, we're still a little bit of color contamination on the edges, which you don't see on the black background. Um, who, who knows where this stuff can go, but that, that was more than I expected from uh, select subjects. So it's, it's become a lot, it's become a lot better. I very don't have to often say go to select and mask anymore where this gets the job done. Okay, next up, a very, very quick word from our sponsor. If you would just give me 60 seconds as if you watch my videos, you know the sponsor is always me. Um, if you guys would swing by the website over at mattk.com. Got lots of great training courses and presets for you as well as free tutorials. Uh, if you click on the courses, one of the things we're doing uh, during this time is a temporary 50% off pricing for those that have to stay home a little bit more than, than they're used to right now and want to use this time to, to do a little bit of learning, um, hopefully this helps out. So as you look through the courses section, uh, specifically, if you want to learn more about Lightroom, my, my Lightroom system is the all-encompassing uh, Lightroom course, everything from importing, organizing, catalogs, develop, advanced develop, uh, printing, photo books, and my Photoshop system is my big Photoshop course. So if you're 
if you're pretty new to Photoshop and you want a course that's not going to teach you everything that graphic designers and illustrators need, but rather just the Photoshop, just the photography stuff, just the stuff that you need to know as a photographer, um, Photoshop becomes a much easier tool to learn when you cut all that other stuff out. So both of those courses are on sale. And uh, during these times, I always like to point out, I, I give you at least six months of free updates, if not longer. I, I usually do much longer than that. So you're not stuck having to go buy another Lightroom course just for a couple of updates. But you can scroll through the page and see a lot more advanced courses over there as well. Okay, let's jump back over to the tutorial. All right, uh, next couple of updates. So let's go switch over to this photo. Uh, if you were to open up a photo in Camera Raw, and I'll do it through the filter menu now, but if you open up a raw photo, the same thing would happen. Um, you could see here, you get a new little splash screen and you can get an idea for, for, the, uh, for what it's included, new look and feel. So a couple of interface changes, uh, ISO adaptive presets. Here's the big one, local hue. So it's basically selective hue adjustments for, for as long as I've been teaching Lightroom, people have been asking for this adjustment. So right off the bat, I think the interface does look a little bit more modern, a little bit more crisp and clean. Um, you'll notice gone is the toolbar at the top. Remember all of our tools used to be over here at the top. So that's a pretty big change. Now you're going to see all of your tools over here on the right hand side. Okay. A lot like the Lightroom uh, cloud version that you'll find on your uh, desktop and mobile devices. So you'll see all of your tools over here on the right hand side. And then you can click those, uh, those little options there. You can see a couple more options inside of there. So let's go to our brush tool. And here's the big setting that this is probably one of the most asked setting. And it's also included in Lightroom uh, Classic and Lightroom, the cloud mobile version as well. Selective view. So now you can use your graduated filter, your radio filter, or your brush to selectively change the hue. We've had hue and saturation adjustments um, in, in as a panel, but now we have them as a selective adjustment as well, so it's not global. So we go over here and we change it. You can always go up. A couple of things have changed. You know, you know there's a couple of settings in your brush, some new icons over here. And don't forget, there's a little left facing arrow icon over here where it's next to the brush size, you've got to flip it down and now you'll get all of your brush settings as well as auto mask. So I would go and just kind of brush along here. I'm not going to be too particular about it for our video purposes here, but just keep that middle crosshair over. And I did not in some of these spots, uh, you can always hold down option or alt to erase from there but that'll help your auto mask work a little bit better. All right. Um, and I'll go ahead and keep brushing there, get a little bit. And then I always turn auto mask off when I don't need it because it just works better and faster uh, without it. So now I'm selectively changing hue. Again, I had hue sliders in a separate panel, but those were global adjustments. So they were going to get affected to the whole photo. So now I've just painted in this one area. And as I go in here and I scroll through, you can see I can change the color, I missed a couple of spots over here, but you get the idea. Now we can go in here and selectively change the hue of certain parts of the photo. Now, just trying to walk you through some interface changes. When you want to get back to your regular panels, you've got to click the little edit settings here and the keyboard shortcut is E. So that's a good keyboard shortcut to remember too. Just E will get you back to all of your normal panels here. And again, you're going to notice everything's got a little bit of a facelift curves. You'll see the RGB channels in a little bit of a different way here. Uh, if I were to go in and add anything with curves to the photo, uh, once I collapse that panel, you'll see a little eyeball icon that's lit up, meaning you have changes in that panel. So you've got a visual cue to know that something's changed inside of there. When you come down here to the color mixer and you'll notice we can adjust HSL or you can adjust color. They basically do the same thing. They do it in a different way, but you'll notice a little bit of a facelift over there. Uh, if you want to get to your presets, so again, there was, a, there was a separate little preset panel. Now you'll notice it is a little icon over here on the right-hand side. Uh, building on those presets, if you go under uh, the, where you can actually create a new preset, when you're working with multiple ISO photos, okay? When you're working with you know, a photo with one certain ISO and you'd have to have opened uh, multiple photos in Camera Raw to do this. 
But when you click create new preset, you're going to see create ISO adaptive preset. So that's a setting that was lost um, when Lightroom or when Photoshop and Lightroom both updated to the way that they will allow you to apply defaults to your photos. They, that ISO adaptive preset was lost and that was a few months ago. Well, now it's back. It's just back in a different in a way that probably makes a little bit more sense now. So again, you would have had to open up two different ISO photos into Adobe Camera Raw and have those photos selected when you went to create a preset to see this uh, enabled here. But you can create your presets uh, that way as well, okay? All right, so let's cancel out of Camera Raw. And the last thing is going to be, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually point you over, I'll leave a link in the description to the Adobe website uh, where you can find out a little bit more about the graphic design features. But when it comes to the type tool, so uh, if, you're, if you're using text in your photo, so I'll just go type in some text here. If you're using text in your photo, if you ever opened up a, an image that maybe was a long time ago or somebody gave you and that font wasn't in, available on your computer, you would see a missing font message. So now they have this uh, way to auto enable that font. So you should see less of those messages. And then if you come up here to the type menu, uh, one of the things that we've been able to do, one of the newer features was the ability to uh, match a font. So you can see down here, match font. And it lets you, gives you this box where you can draw this around. This has been around for a while. So with that new Adobe Sensei technology, which is a big part of where your hair selection was improved from, because Adobe's constantly working on that AI technology. Now that match font is just going to work a little bit better. So again, I will refer you over to the Adobe website for the graphic design like changes, but from a photography standpoint, uh, really the, the star of the show is going to be select uh, select subject, which just works tremendously better, as well as some of those features that were updated in Camera Raw. And keep in mind, they were also updated in Lightroom. So uh, I do have a Lightroom video that goes over all of your Lightroom classic updates if you'd like to see that one as well.